Hey, welcome back to the CA Power Players Podcast. Your host, Cody Askins. I got a special guest today. This woman has done incredible things in this business. Let me give you some stats for introducer. Okay, it's crazy what she's done. Her team last year did $35 million in premium in all simplified issue life insurance. She did almost a couple hundred grand her very first year. Her team, this is cool. Her team did one hundred and fifty k in January of 2020. And then fast forward 1.2 million in January of 2021. Please welcome to the podcast, the ultimate power player, Ashley Gronberg. Thank you so much, Cody. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate that. That was one of the best intro introductions I've ever had. So I appreciate you big time. Thank you. Yeah, you too. You've We've known each other for years. Um, you've, you've just like risen in this industry, like crazy. What you've done is special. Um, I think one of the first questions I have is before I get to some of your story is how does someone take an agency from 150 K to 1.2 million a month in a year? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think that there's a lot of, I mean, that's, that's a jam packed question right there, but I love it because, uh, it is actually pretty simple to narrow down now at this point that I'm able to look back and uh, see how we did it. And we could talk all day about leads and different ways to attract people through social media, which is a big part of what we did is we use social media to attract our ideal agency. And so with all that being said, I think the number one uh, thing for me personally, and a lot of people in our agency, what we learned is that you have to fall in love with meeting new people. And I know that a lot of people on this podcast listening here understand that this business is about building relationships. Well, I think it's a mix of building relationships, but also creating new relationships, you know, um, within uh, your market. So for me, it was it was a lot of falling in love with meeting new people. And the reason I say falling in love with it is because there's not. There's nothing that will compare to falling in love and meeting new people, or I'm sorry, what I'm trying to say is there are so many different ways to grow this, but if you can really, truly fall in love with meeting new people, then you will grow. Um, And that's what happened with a lot of people on our team is they actually started to really like to meet new people and um, expose the opportunity to them and grow. And and I think that that has a lot to do with it is getting your people to actually enjoy that. Cause a lot of people want the shortcut and a lot of people are like, so what are you doing? I'm, like, I'm taking a lot of calls, putting out a lot of content and trying to yeah. find people that will fit within our agency. That's right. That's such a good point. I mean, you think about that. Um, if we see people consistently, we, we, you know, from a prospecting standpoint, we find success, you know, like the only reason people fell in the end business is they just don't get in front of enough prospects, you know? And so it's, it's, it's interesting for you to say that because it is such a relationship business. You're also just naturally really good with people from a relationship standpoint. People tend to really trust you or are attracted to what you're doing, right? Like you're just someone that people can lean on and, and that you have a big heart to help them. Um, where's that come from? Okay. I'd love for you to share your story, uh, whatever you want to share there, where you're from, you know, what you were like growing up, where you've worked, you know, et cetera, et cetera, whatever you like to share. Uh, for those that don't know who Ashley Gromberg is quite yet. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. That's actually a fun place to start. Um, and I think that we always look for reasons on why we are this way we are now or, you know, yes. what it was that, where we came from. And for me, it's hard to co- compartmentalize maybe the reasons for things, but I can share a little bit of my story. And I do think Please. that uh, it all has you know, plays its part. So uh, growing up, I was always very outgoing. You know, I I always wanted to meet new people. I think one thing that happened um, early on was that I had to move from school to school. So every time I got comfortable at one school, I moved to another one, all within the same city, but I still had to go and make new friends in a new one, right? So it just always kept me kind of on my toes, meeting new people. So that was kind of something that happened, I think, in my childhood where at the time, I was not so happy about, but it helped me to get uncomfortable and meet new people. And mm-hmm. you kind of hear that a lot with military families, you know, like I had to move around and, you know, but yes. uh, it was yes. the same city, but different schools. So, um, yeah, I, I think that I grew up, I was very, very fortunate to grow up with parents who were really hard workers and they also worked really hard to serve people, um, both in our community and outside. Um, my dad, he... He's a blue collar union worker, worked to, worked his butt off. You know, we didn't we didn't spend uh, every birthday at a restaurant, but he definitely made it special. We'd have it at home. And he just he worked very hard and he taught my sister and I both 
that as long as you are giving even sometimes more than you can, like you will always receive back what it is that you're seeking. And so he had that servant heart. My mom busted her butt. She, you know, she worked from basically being a single mom to owning an own daycare so she could stay at home to then going into uh, business for herself, ended up um, blowing up a, a huge urgent care chain and became the COO and ended up selling it. So she's a huge inspiration on the business side. Um, yeah. And then um, really, I just, I grew up, like I said, with hard workers and, and servant leaders, you know, in the community. And um, one thing that was always such a great example to me was my dad was always finding projects to help people. It was like the never ending home improvement show at my own house, but then the same with my neighbors and down the street in lower income neighborhoods. Um, you know, he's built um, orphanages in Haiti. Once those earthquakes hit for the last nine years, gone back and done improvements. He just spent his summer in Africa. Um, and so I really, you know, I've been blessed to be raised by parents who um, work their butt off for their own family, but then also go and give back. And sometimes um, even giving back when you can't, um, I think that that's where true, um, that's where a lot of breakthroughs happen for people is when you're yeah. giving back and you, you're not really knowing how you're going to get back what you just gave, but you do it anyway. And when you do things like that, I think it's cool because you can, you don't walk away from situations like that going like, oh, what am I going to do? You're inspired by yourself, you know? Yes. And I watched my dad do that grow up and for me, there was actually a moment where I, I found that I had a disattachment from money, right? And that was, I was actually in the field. I was working as an agent my first, I think, like three months in the business. There was a kid at the gas station who needed money for gas. And I watched him go around to all these people asking for gas money. And I'm like, I better get in my car because I know I'm next to be asked. And it's not that I don't want to talk to him. I don't have any money. And mm -hmm. something came over me and I... and. I will preface the fact that I wasn't good with money. So it's a mix of not being good with money and also really caring about people and wanting to help. And I went and gave him my last $20 instead of hopping in my car. And when I left that gas station and I was driving, I was not thinking about, Oh my God, what am I going to do? Oh my gosh, how am I going to get home? You know what? Cause I was in on a travel trip. My mind wasn't thinking all of those things. It was like, yeah. I was inspired by myself. Like I said, right? Like I was like, wow, that was so awesome. Like I made his day, like, you know, all these people turn him down, but I was able to give that to him, you know? Yeah. It made me feel good, but I was also just happy that, that I made that decision. And that was kind of a breakthrough moment for me. One where I lost my attachment to money and where I realized mm -hmm. that, that, um, if you give more than you can, sometimes you'll get it back 10 times. And that's what I've experienced in my life over and over again. Um, but sorry, just to circle back around to, you asking where that, where that came from, Yeah, where my heart came from. It's just, I've grown up around really good people. And, and, mm -mm. and so it helped me to kind of make those kind of decisions for myself. That's, that's awesome. Sorry. I was making sure my, I thought my internet was connected properly. Um, Cause it's so good. Like, I love how you shared your story of how you shared your last $20, you know, like that shares, that shows a lot about you because majority of the human race would not do that. Right. And, in that moment, if it was my last 20 bucks, I hate shame to say I probably wouldn't do it either. Right. So, so what, where does, where does that piece come from? Because that, that makes a lot of sense why you're so successful in, in the industry. And we're going to get into Ashley's story more and her production and what she's done and how she can help agents, et cetera, et cetera, because she's doing so good at that. But where does that piece come from? Because that makes so much more sense to me at why you've been so successful at attracting and helping others in this space. Yeah. I think that really it comes down to uh i would have to say that it the the reason i i believe i was able to do things like that or wh why those ideas kind of spark inside me to kind of like give my last dollar or you know when i Easy. when i should probably take overtime but i want to go and you know i don't know work with my dad or hang out with my family those i guess for me, it's really those moments only happen. What I've realized is when I'm surrounding myself with people who are supporting kind of my mm. vision and where I want to go in life. So I guess that that kind of ties into it because for me, I believe that if you want to change your story, you need to put yourself around people who don't believe your old one. And that's mm. huge because if you're, if you're, there's been times in my life where I've been around people that 
they don't believe that I'm going to become this person if I share it, right? Or they don't, um, they don't want to believe it or, or whatever. It, it has nothing to do with them or nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with them. Um, and so one, knowing that is huge, but two, just being able to re-surround yourself with people. Like I know some of the people who support me the most sometimes are strangers or people I just met. Like, I'm sorry, Drake. I know you have the song, No New Friends. I used to jam that song and rap it in my car, but it's kind of lame because yes. new friends and new environment and new people to get around. I mean, those are going to be the people sometimes that, in, that inspire you the most, that push you the hardest, that challenge you, that question what you're doing in, in a positive way, you know, and yes. help you grow. A lot of the times those people that have been around for a little while, you know, if th those might not be the people to be around. So it's interesting how that works. That's a really good point you're bringing up. Um, I love how you talked about how it's important it is to, to find people that would support your vision in some way, you know, how, mm -hmm. what, before we keep moving on, like we say there's an agent out there that, that they want to be doing things more like you are right on your level and, you know, making money and helping agents and putting up 35 million in a year, right. Et cetera, et cetera. Maybe there's an agent out there though, that they don't feel like their vision is being supported where they're currently at, or nobody believes in them. You know, you've probably been there. What advice would you give to somebody in your shoes previously, wherever they are standing right now? Yeah. So I would, I would definitely take inventory of the people in your life, figure out which ones you want to stay. And mm -hmm. even if it's people who aren't supporting you at the time, I would take a look at those people and figure out what conversation you need to have with them. Cause a lot of times I would tell people, and I'm, I'm not married and when I started in this, I was hiring people who were married, who had, you know, four kids and, you know, they had two jobs and a lot of things going on where I'm like, how can I as a single, you know, at the time I was just a single 26 year old woman, mm -hmm. how do I relate to this, you know, this whole family over here? Yeah. And what I realized through working with enough people, and that's, that's what I have to offer with you guys here that are listening is I've just worked with a lot of different types of people. And if let's say that you're married and, and obviously like your wife or your husband is someone that you're going to want to hop on board or be on board with what you're doing. It takes having hard conversations. Hey, look, look, honey, I know I kind of messed up with this other thing that kind of did not work out. And maybe I didn't give it all I've got, but I really believe in what I'm going after right now. So what the next month is going to look like, if it's okay with you to give me this all, or to give me your all and, and your under undivided attention and support. Like right now is here's what the next month is going to look like. And just yeah. laying that out for those people. So, I mean, with family scheduling it out, having a conversation with them, I think is huge. Um, and then for people who, um, you know, maybe it's friends or, or, you know, people within your organization currently, you need to look at who's, who's giving you energy and who's taking it away. And it's pretty, mm. pretty clear. When you're done on a phone call with them, when you go to lunch with them, are you fired up? Do you feel good about yourself? Are you kind of like, oh, I kind of feel like I'm I'm not growing in this relationship, you know, or friendship. Yeah. And, and you just have to, it's much easier to subtract than add. So you subtract and then you can add things into your life. Better people will start to flock your way. And when you, when you make those hard decisions for yourself, you'll actually be proud of yourself and you'll be happy that you did. It's just in the moment, it's going to suck because you're, you're like, you're cutting out friends, you yeah. know? But I think it's really important. Last thing on that, Cody, is look yeah. at the ecosystem both at home and at work. And if it's not a natural environment for you to grow and thrive, well, then you got to make, you know, fix some variables in there. But that's what the, I like that reference because it gives me this like idea of this bubble of an ecosystem. You know, if the plants and stuff can't grow because these other things are, are killing it, you got to remove those things and, and make sure that your ecosystem is a safe place for you to grow. Yes. Such good advice. Great advice. Um, Here's where I want to take it next. I'm, I'm curious, why insurance? H how does Ashley end up selling Simfide Issue life insurance? Yeah, that's that's especially great at such a, a young age too. You know, I mean, you got you got started at what age? I was twenty. Actually, I think it was twenty five. Wow. No, twenty six. I'm sorry, twenty six. Yeah, because you probably didn't grow up saying, you know what, dude, I got to sell life insurance when I'm in my when I'm twenty five. I'm doing this thing. No. Not at all. Um, yeah, so I grew up, I mean, I worked in an urgent care when I was in high school and I was very close to the doctor and my mom was the nurse who ran it. And so I really, really liked that dynamic. I grew up wanting to be a doctor. 
for some period of time. I changed my mind like every day on what I wanted to be, but that was something that I was going to pursue. It's why I, you know, wanted to get good grades and why I did get good grades until a certain point. Um, and then I ended up <clears throat> getting out of high school, getting into community college. And I was, I, I was like, there's no way, there's no way I'm going to do this for another eight years. You know, I just got out of 12 years of that. I'm not going to yes. sign up and pay for eight years of this. It just wasn't for me. I wasn't inspired. I don't blame I, you. I just and, wasn't. And, and you make more money than a lot of doctors now. Yeah. I mean, and I respect people that, that go to college when they don't have another plan and they end up paying off their debt, all that. I mean, it's a lot of respect because that kind of discipline, I think if you, as long as you're not loyal to that degree or that debt or all that crap, um, then, I mean, you've got some good discipline to work with as far as into your next endeavor. But so I ended up not finishing college, obviously. Uh, but what I will say is I was a serial job taker, applier, go-getter. I The moment I was not happy in a job, I was on to the next one. I was always pushing myself to be the best in my job and get the promotion, get the top pay, whatever I needed to do. But typically I would reach that next level and then look at the next level up and go, yeah, I don't wanna be there. So I'm gonna look for something else. So I just mm -hmm. constantly applied for new jobs. I would do really good at one, leave and go to the next. I still have people reaching out to me from a company I was with a while back um, in property management. Hey, we're going to open a new property. How can we get you? Or I guess if you're not going to do it, some of your friends to lease it, you know? So I was constantly, um, I did a very good job at what I did, but I just constantly kept it moving. And I love that I kept it moving because then when insurance presented itself um, and I was sitting down at happy hour eating sushi, I had someone from high school sitting next to me who I saw on social media, Instagram had a, I think it was a Bentley. I'm pretty sure it was a Bentley or a BMW or both. He, it was a uh, boyfriend, girlfriend I went to high school with. But I remember uh, they were, they asked me like, hey, we're hiring for our sales position. Uh, if you want to come in, you know, on Monday for an interview, uh, we make like $100,000 a year for starting off or, or just starting off. And I knew nothing about it. They were really good at what they did because I went in, got signed up for my test, had no idea still what I was doing. I'm like, what am I doing? I just paid for a, for an exam. Like, what am I doing? And it was a whole interview, group interview. I talked to a lot of people that came from that organization, like kudos to them because they did a good job of just casting some vision that wasn't clear, but we were all like, okay, that sounds good. Better than what we're doing, yeah. you know? Yeah. So um, I just, I jumped at a hundred thousand dollar sales position. You can work whenever you want, however you want. That was really how I got into it. But it's important wow. to know that I was just job job hopping, you know, yes. up to that point. I kept it moving. Like I said, if I wasn't happy, I just kept moving. Yeah. Did you did you get bored easy? Or are you just naturally um entrepreneurial? Like Um I definitely do get bored easily. I have to continue to grow my mind, learn. I can't be doing the same. I mean, I love a good routine, definitely, but sure. I will get bored easily. And if I don't see if I don't see where I can go or if I can see where I can go and I, I don't want to go there, I just, I was never afraid of building the resume. I had people all the time tell me, you need to stick somewhere so that you can have a solid resume. I'm like, I no. Like, yeah. you know, I'll crush an interview. I don't, I don't need the resume, you know, for, <laughs> I for, love what, I, for what I was applying for. I was like, I'll crush, you know, that Plus, sounds like something I would say. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So I just kept it moving. Really. That's how I found insurance and, yeah. And that's where I began. Okay. So then you, you jump into the, in the business, you write 197,000, I think your first 12 months, mm -hmm. um, you were selling somebody's life insurance at that point too. Yep. Um, mortgage protection. Jumped into mortgage protection about six months into it, I would say, and okay. still did both, um, FEX and mortgage protection. Okay. Okay. Is there a preference or is it like, you know what? I just help people no matter what they need. Um, I would say that a preference for a little while was mortgage protection because it challenged me a little bit more. I was really good with elderly folks. I was, those were like my people, you know, I loved yeah. sitting down with, uh, seniors, but yeah. the mortgage protection challenged me, you know, cause I had to have a husband and wife and the kids are running around. And so that, yeah. that was a challenge for me. Um, you know, making sure that, that, uh, made both of them comfortable and, you know, so that was a little bit more of a challenge. So I ended up liking that. I ended up um, 
liking the lead sources on that a little bit more. But now fast forward, I'm actually um, focused on both um, life and Medicare side. So I'm very excited for what FEX can do now because we can obviously, um, you know, help seniors with both with that lead. So yes, yes. I want to jump to Medicare in just a second before I do. Um, yeah. What did you do differently that you wrote 197,000 your first year when most agents write about 50,000 if they even make it? Uh, well, I definitely created a system for myself. So I made sure that I was investing in leads uh, every week and wasn't just trying to go through the old ones from the week before. I definitely wasn't afraid to invest yeah. in myself. Um, again, How much did you spend per week back then? Uh, in the, I would say on average, then I was probably spending, I want to say on average, because in the beginning it was so much less. Um, I would sure. say probably about 1500, 1500 a week. Wow. That's still a good amount for a lot of agents. Some, some of them are like, I can't do that. I don't have the money to spend 1500 bucks a week, but you probably didn't either. No. I mean, as far as like, you know, if I was one week out of the business at, at one point, you know, um, or took a week off, like, yeah, I would be out of business, but I just kept it moving. Yeah. After after selling life for so long, building such a, such a giant agency, what is it about Medicare that gets your attention so much? Yeah, so the Medicare side of the business is so exciting to me, um, and it's not the more I've learned about it, the sexier it gets because I've heard a lot of times, you know, Medicare's not sexy, life's life's where it's at. I think like the best overall agency you could have is one that is focused on both because the life insurance side is going to be able to. Um, mm -hmm. you know, get, get you that cash, get you that money right away. And then the Medicare side is going to help you secure it and keep it. And one thing I think in the, in the life insurance side of this business is we know how to make it, but sometimes, you know, if you're growing a big team and you're hiring, 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 it might get hard to manage and, you know, things can fall through the cracks. And next thing you know, you got a little bit of a, um, you know, you got chargebacks, you've got all these other expenses that you're looking at. And it starts to add up. And so the Medicare really, I think, is going to be able to allow our agents to really secure the income that they're making. Yes. And also secure a future for themselves um, with with not requiring as many people, I guess, in your agency, if that makes sense. Sure. Yeah. yeah. You want, but it's as far as the residuals go, um, you could build something big on that side. Yeah, and it can really sort of stack up, right? And then, and then the previous year's work from years ago, you're still getting paid from, you know, which is cool, mm -hmm. and it, it can definitely grow. How's the lead piece vary? Is is for for leads? Is it for those that don't know? Is it similar? Is it different? What's the comparison there? Um, there's a lot of similarities. Um, obviously, you can um, find different ways to find Medicare clients through your book of business if you are on the life side. Um, so reaching out, um, with clients on renewals, you know, you can already dive into your book of business, um, if that's where you came from, but on the lead side, there's a lot of different, um, programs in the Medicare space where you can look into doing some outreach. Um, it's a lot about building relationships within the community, um, building good relationships. I'm hearing with doctors and doctor's offices and, um, you know, just being, um, <clears throat> being present in your community and, and going out there and looking for the business, you know? Um, so there's, I'm excited about that because there's different little ways that you can um, gather clients on that side. But at the same time, there's still um, mailers that you can use and there's still obviously online leads that you can, that you can utilize. And so yeah. um, there's tons of options in, in the lead space in our industry for sure. Um, you just got to find them and, and test them. Yes. You, you mentioned earlier you're using social media uh, to attract um, agents, which is, a, you know, a, a more modern approach to recruiting. What are some of the things that you are doing that you're free to share that other agency owners can learn from to attract really younger agents to their team? Yeah. So that's a that's a fun one, because I think on social media, um, we share a lot of the highlight reel. Right. We are sharing what looks good. We're sharing what we love, what we've learned. Um, but I think the the best way to attract people that you want into your agency is one, you really got to start to develop and become that person. And then instead of focusing so much on social media and creating content, I learned this from a really good guy and I wish I knew his name right now. Um, but he said, 
He's like, instead of focusing on creating content all the time, because that's really overwhelming, he's like, why don't you just document what you're doing and share it? And I was mm. like, what? Why don't people know about that? <laughs> you know, it seems so simple, but it's perfect because, yeah. you know, then you can hire someone to follow you around and, and just show what it is that you're doing. You know, today I'm on a podcast. Could have someone in the background. Hey, we're on this podcast, you know, and create some curiosity. But that's that's the number one thing is you that should be your goal on social media is you want to create some curiosity. Um, but then at the same time, you want to be really clear about what it is that you're doing. Mm. Like if someone goes to your page and they have no idea what you're doing or they kind of think that you do this and they kind of think you do that, that's going to create just someone to basically click off, click off your page. Um, but some tips for you guys who are trying to grow on social media yeah. is you don't need to follow the trends as much as you think you need to. I know that. I know that with the amount of followers I have right now on Instagram, which is not a lot, Cody, it's like three, it's like 3,700. Wow. I have friends who have 100,000, 40,000. They got the blue check mark. And I ask them, I'm like, well, how many people watch your story today? And they're like, oh, like, you know, 600. I'm like, dang, I have like 1,400 people and I have 3,000 followers. So my That's engagement. crazy engagement. That's yeah. Crazy engagement. And I think that what that comes from is one, I mean, and you see, if you guys go to my Instagram, it's just Ash. Ashley Gromberg, just type in Ashley Gromberg on my Instagram. You can see yeah. I don't have much on there and I need to ramp that up. That's definitely the goal. Um, but I do a lot of outreach. I reach out to people within my industry so that the algorithm starts to catch trend of what I'm trying to do. Um, and I do a lot of voice messaging. Hey, Cody, it looks like we're in the same space. Hope you're crushing it. Um, how is everything going through COVID? Were you able to, to, grow or did you guys have a setback or how did, what did that look like for you? Um, another good tip you guys is throw someone a compliment. If you can tell someone what you learned from them, they want to listen. That's cool. And the best compliment is definitely telling someone what you've learned from them because now they feel like they're teaching you and that was probably their goal. Yes. So, just a couple of tips there. That's great. Such good freaking tips. Okay, good. I love that crazy eye engagement, voice messaging in the DMS. That's cool. That's very creative and unique. Um, and throwing a compliment about something that you learned from them. I love that. Uh, people are definitely going to use that. We could do more of that on our own stuff for sure. Um, how can they uh, learn more from you, reach out to you, and really follow everything of uh, more of what you're doing? I do know you mentioned your IG, and it is Ashley, A-S-H-L-I, and then Gronberg is G-R-O-N-B-E-R-G for those that maybe didn't know that. Yes. How, so yep. so how, how else can they... Uh, reach out, learn from you. They could obviously do that. Is there something else they should do? Yeah. I mean, I can give you guys my personal phone number. I have I think I've thrown that out on social media enough times. So wow. if you want that. It's so up to you. you. I mean, it's on my Instagram. So if you guys want to go there for that, you can. Um, but then also we've, I've got my LinkedIn as well, Cody. Um, but, but yeah, Instagram is, is definitely a spot where I connect with a lot of people, LinkedIn as well. Um, and then I can, throw my number out there or you can get it from my Instagram, whatever you think, Cody. You can throw it out. That's cool. Yeah. It's up to you. Okay. All right. It is 480-859-1445. Again, 480-859-1445. Go give Ashley some love. Okay. Thank you so much for listening and we will see you on the next Power Player Podcast. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. Welcome back to the CA YouTube channel. I love finding special guests that know special information and that can help everyone as they are trying to blow up their business. This cat I got today, okay, he, he, he may not even love being called a cat, but I'm telling you, this dude is impressive.